name of this course is Basic Timing. It is applicable to the Cray 1A, Cray 1S, and Cray 1M computer systems. The course is divided into five separate units. Each unit should, if possible, be taken in a single sitting. The first unit of this course describes the operation of the 5-4 gate integrated circuit chip. All of the timing circuits described in subsequent course units are designed around this chip. The second unit describes the operation of the master clock. The master clock generates timing pulses which are fanned out to each and every Cray 1 module. These timing pulses ensure total system synchronization. Each module uses the master clock to generate its own module clock. All module clocks are separate but identical in their operation. Unit 3 describes the module clock and its use as timing for all storage elements or circuits. Unit 4 describes the operation of a latch. It is one of the primary storage elements in the Cray 1 and will help to demonstrate the use of the module clock. A knowledge of this circuit will also be necessary for all subsequent courses. The last unit describes the use of most of the basic maintenance documentation for the Cray 1. It starts out with a description of the Boolean equations, which are algebraic expressions of logical operations and are used in place of logic diagrams. The wire tabs provide a means of tracing signals between modules. The module maps provide a means of physically identifying the location of a chip given its Boolean equation. As we begin Unit 1, remember that a logic level will be described as being a 1 or 0. A 1 is equal to approximately minus 1.7 volts, and 0 is equal to approximately minus 0.7 volts. 1 is considered to be the active level. The 5-4 gate is an integrated circuit chip which contains two logical elements, a 4-input AND gate and a 5-input AND gate. Each AND gate has a normal and inverted output. The inverted output is designated with a bubble. The propagation time of this logic circuit is approximately one nanosecond. The top AND gate illustrates that its logical operation is such that when all inputs are at a one level, the normal output goes to one and the inverted to zero. The bottom gate illustrates that when any one or more of the inputs go to zero, the normal output goes to zero and the inverted to one. Thirteen of the sixteen chip pins are assigned to gate inputs and outputs. Pin twelve, one of the remaining pins, is tied to minus five volts. Pins four and five are tied to ground. The minus 5 volts is used for drive voltage only and does not produce the 1 or 0 logic levels. Looking at an actual chip shows that the pins are of two alternating lengths. This ensures that the chip will not be inserted backwards. The dot in one corner of the chip indicates the location of pin 1. Now let's look at some additional characteristics of the 5-4 gate. Each output, both normal and inverted, can drive four loads as long as those loads are on the same module. Each output must be tied through a 60 ohm resistor to minus two volts. The resistor is called a pull-up resistor and in conjunction with the chip produces the one and zero logic levels. The resistor and minus two volts produce the voltage source and the chip drives the line towards ground for a logic zero or reflects an open for a logic one. The resistor is located next to the load which is the furthest distance 
from the source gate. The top gate illustrates that when outputs leave the module, the normal and inverted pins are tied to an output pin pair with the same numeric designation. In our case, they are tied to pin pair 1. Twisted pair wire is used between modules to decrease the amount of noise. The twisted pair is then tied to a pin pair, in our case pin pair 2, of the new module. Each gate output, both normal and inverted, can only drive three loads if those loads are located on another module. In that case, the pull-up resistor will be located on the destination module next to the load that is located furthest from the input pin pair. As shown, even though the inverted output is not used in this case, a 60 ohm pull-up resistor is still used and is located on the destination module. Looking at the actual resistor package, we see the package has three external connections. Inside the package, there are two resistors. One end of both of the resistors is tied together to form one output. The other ends of the resistors are fed directly to the output. The common end will be externally tied to minus two volts and the other resistor ends to the output of the logic elements. Occasionally, one or more gate outputs are tied together in what is called a wired AND condition. In that case, the zero logic level overrides a one. If the input to a gate is not used, it is left open and will reflect a logical one. Input pin pairs to a module are either unused, tied to dynamic logic signals, or connected in such a way as to provide a constant one or zero to the module. A constant one exists when the normal pin of the input pin pair is always at a one level and the inverted a zero. This is called a force one condition. A constant zero exists when the normal pin of the pin pair is always at a zero level and the inverted a one. This is called a force zero condition. To provide a force one condition, the normal pin is left open and will reflect a one level. The inverted pin is tied to ground through two parallel 60 ohm resistors located on another module. To provide a force zero condition, the normal pin is tied to ground through the resistor and the inverted pin is left open. A force one or force zero condition wired to the back panel of a particular module location can be used to enable or disable selected logic on that module or to provide a constant for certain arithmetic operations. This